Hello, and welcome to Sketch It with Helen. I'm trying something different today. I'm starting live. Well, not live, but I'm starting with doing a direct voice rather than a voiceover with me handling papers and talking at the same time. And let's hope I don't get sidetracked because we could be here forever and nothing happens. Let's get back to why we came, which was for today's sketch it video. I've gone online and found the 2019 September page maps sketches and I've chosen this one. I like the pears and the bits of fruit. No, I don't know why I chose this one but I it spoke to me so I thought let's give it a go and see what happens. I found two photos. I've pre-cut them to three by three. It's myself and my second cousin Jasmine we were modelling crochet jackets that Jasmine's mum, my cousin, crocheted and she wanted the pictures for her website. I think Jasmine does a bit better job modelling than I do. But anyway, I'm going to try and create that story and see what happens. I went through my stash and I found these papers from the Maggie Holmes Flourish collection. This one jumped out at me, the green, because I saw it and thought, oh, that's going to match my shirt, <laughs> which I'm wearing now. Can you see it? No, probably not. Look, I do love this shirt. Bought it when I was in England. Anyway, back to the layout. This green caught my eye because I thought, well, it'll match my shirt. And then I just went through the collection, finding papers that I also liked and I thought picked up tones in the two cardigans that we're wearing. Well, kind of. Maybe not really, but no grey or anything. But I thought it went, and I found this one, and I thought this will be, for a change, my background paper, instead of using a piece of bar, um, basil marshmallow white like I would normally. Anyway, I think I've rambled long enough. Let's get started. The first thing I did was cut out the centre of the green patterned paper. I do this because it allows me to do exactly this now, matte behind my photos. It also just reduces the thickness of the layouts when they do go into my scrapbook album and I do say when they do go in. You can see here I've pulled out this black piece or patterned paper with the cameras on and to mat a second layer I place them in the corners in the hope that I'll get it fairly square. Now I'm going to work on the background mat or the large square and do I measure it? No. I just trim a piece. Does it turn out to be the right size? Eh, no. But, you know, a little bit of extra trimming doesn't hurt anyone. And now I've got a size where the leftover green patterned paper is enough to actually have a mat of the floral patterned paper. Oh, all this matting. What am I doing? But I decided that it was actually getting a little bit too green and brown. So I'm bringing in this pink patterned paper just to do a fine mat, because, you know, let's have another mat behind the brown. And it just breaks up or brightens the different layers. When I cut out the centre of a piece of paper just like this, I usually leave about an inch border around. That allows me enough space to layer up the pieces, to attach any double-sided tape, and just hold the layout together. It works well with a rotary cutter, easy to do. I don't know, have you ever tried it yourself? Do you do this method or do you just use the whole piece of patterned paper and buy another one? I used to be like that, but I'm trying to be a bit more conscious of how much I'm spending and how much am I using or wasting. So I do tend to mat when I can. No, not mat. I'm doing enough of that as it is on this layout. I mean gut large pieces rather than just layer them up. So as you can see I cut a piece of the leftover pink for this strip on the left hand side like there was in the sketch and I decided that why not let's map them as well doing coordinating or no alternate matting. So the pink strip you can see I'm matting with the black and I've turned it into a banner and then the black piece in a minute 
guess what? Yep, you're right. I'm going to map that in pink. Just working out how long I wanted it. And originally, I was thinking of turning it at the banner to the tail to the right. And then I realized that that meant the cameras were upside down. And I couldn't cope with that. So I had to be facing the right way up. So the banner is going to face to the left. I've pulled out my T-square ruler just to help me line it up. When I'm having an element like this on my page, I do like it straight, if it's meant to be straight. And so I do use this T-square ruler just to help me on different times or occasions, just to make sure it's all lined up. I think DS even at the bottom here. Just help, makes me feel better about the page. If it's meant to be intentionally crooked, different story, but if it's supposed to be straight, I need it to be straight. I pulled out the stickers and embellishments that I have for the Flourish collection and decided to use, oh, a teal, what a surprise, the sticker here as that element on the left hand side, like in a sketch. I did need to use some fun foam on the left hand side of it because with all my layers, it didn't lay flat. Oh, surprise. A bit of fun foam behind the photo of me just so that I can can layer it up. It allows me to put the stick embellishments behind it, but also to just to lift it off the other photo. After fiddling around, I needed to cut it a bit so that it actually did lay flat. My fun foam over the whole back of the photo. In the sketch, there were some labels across that banner, and as there were those in the sticker collection, it worked perfectly. And then I just decided to start embellishing. Why I pulled these house stickers out, I really can't tell you. I just like the look of them and thought they went there. I haven't got anything to do with the page. Well, not really. I was at my cousin's house when we took these photos, so maybe subliminally I was thinking that. But I just like the colours. They went, so I used them. Pulled out some black stickers from my own collection or stash and tried to work out a title that was too long. I was going to say modelling in time, I think. And I just decided that the easiest way was to shorten it down and then use these gold stickers and change my title so it would fit the now. It reads model time. Not the best title in the world, but it'll do. Once again, Maggie Holmes has done a brilliant job of these floral stickers. I've always admired all the floral stickers in her collection. You can see I'm building up a little cluster under the title, and I have included that butterfly above the title. When I looked at it a bit more, I decided I didn't like that butterfly there. Having the white strip around the butterfly, I don't know, it just didn't sit well with me. So it will move soon, magically to the left hand side, there it goes. And I've changed it with that black camera. I felt that was a better fit. When I'm making these clusters, I start with the larger stickers first and build my way up. I like them to touch each other some, to some degree and then have a scattering, which is what I'm using these hearts for. I started with the bigger hearts and then finishing off with sprinkling these little gold hearts around. Got some word strips as well, tying in the elements for each section. And then icing on the cake, some Heidi Swap gold colour shine. And that's it. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and are keen to try the sketch yourselves. Thank you very much. See you next time. Bye.